hello welcome to OERA solution channel in this video i'm going to present an example that describes projectile motion and we're going to we're going to walk through this problem and the problem says a missile was fired by an air defense system at the ground with an initial velocity of 15,000 kilometers per hour targeting an overing unmanned aircraft that is located 450 kilometers above the ground and at a distance of 1200 kilometers away we're told to neglect air resistance and to determine the value of the firing angle theta we are to find the shortest possible time the missile will reach the target and we are to find the maximum height the missile could attain if fired at the ground for the shortest possible time to hit its target now the essence for all this problem you can imagine at what time you want to fire at a particular aircraft from the ground you need to know the precise angle with which you would fire the aircraft such as you will hit your target and you want to do that at the shortest possible time and not only that you want to be sure your missile does not go too fast to enter into space because if it should enter into space it becomes another form of problem because in space the value of gravity may differ from what we have here so to solve this problem let's first describe what we have we have um, the missile fired at a particular velocity of 15,000 kilometers per hour and um, it's targeting an aircraft okay at an angle theta and it's targeting an aircraft that is 450 kilometers from the ground and it's 1,200 kilometers away now to achieve this the next thing having identified what has been given to us is to call forth what else we know we know that we are to neglect air resistance so it therefore tells us that the value of acceleration in the horizontal direction as is zero and we know that because the projectile motion is going to be subject to gravity so ay is minus 9.81 meter per second square and we're giving value of velocity u to be 15,000 km per hour then uh, and we have our angle of projection theta we have our horizontal distance 1200 kilometers as well as our vertical distance which is 450 kilometers then we can resolve our velocity into the x components u cos theta and the y components u sine theta now having given all this the next thing we want to bring out right at all these values that has been given to us converting our velocity to meter per second we have 4166.67 meter per second we have our acceleration component as is zero we have our us to be u cos theta so if we evaluate that having the values of u to be 4166.67 meter per second and uh, we can put that back into the equation to get our value for us and once that is done you can have your value for displacement as well we've been we've established before that the value of displacement is the constant velocity multiplied by time and then we have our constant velocity us to be 4166.7 cos theta so we can and we have our displacement to be 1200 kilometers as well which is 1.2 million meters so if we bring that into our equation x is equal to u s times t we're going to have one long equation which is 1,200,000 is equal to a value of velocity 4166.67 times cos theta times time we can call this equation let's not forget that we're trying to solve the first part of the problem that um, requires us to determine angle theta so if we do same for the s for the y as is that's the vertical component we have our acceleration to be minus 9.81 we have our velocity to be u sine theta as derived earlier since we have values of velocity and we're looking for theta so we can put in our values to get our ui to be 4166.67 sine t and there's an equation that has been derived for estimating our angular displacement at every point our vertical displacement at every point in time so if we bring in the value of a and the value of ui as well as the value of displacement we have one basic equation for displacement equation and we can call this equation two so we have two equations one we derive from calculating displacement in the x-axis and the other we derive from calculating the displacement in the y-axis so if we bring these two equations out and we decide to solve simultaneously maybe we try out the substitution method wherein from equation one we make t subject of the formula 
so that we can impute it into equation 2 to find our unknown which is theta so if we do that we have that t is equal to 1.2 million divided by 416.67 times cos theta so we can have one simple equation for t t to be 288 cos t theta and if we take those value into our second equation and we put them into our second equation we get another equation and we can simplify this equation as much as possible to get one basic straight equation that has tan theta and tan square theta so if we write other equation we can for ease simplify further to get what looks like a quadratic equation wherein the unknown becomes tan theta so if we for ease we decide to make x to be equal to tan theta and we put that into the equation we can easily solve our value for of s using any method that is suitable for solving quadratic equation and if that is done with, let's not forget that um, the value of x is tan theta so we can say that theta is equal to arctan s and we can find the value of theta by finding the arctan of the values of time that we got which are 1.21 and 1.73 and that will give us a theta value of 60 or 50 and um, that's the values of angle with which the objects could be projected to hit the target with which the missile could be projected from the ground to hit the target. The next question is to find the time taken to hit the target, but for this case, we are told to look for the shortest possible time. So we'll try out both angles. Putting them back into any of the equation, we can use the first equation from x displacement or the second equation from y displacement. Since the one for x displacement is easier to use, so we'll just try to put in our value of theta into the equation to find time. So if we evaluate to get our value for time we already had time to be 288 over cos theta so if we try at theta equal to 60 degree we get um, our time to be 288 over cos 60 and our time is 576 seconds if we choose to try out our time theta to be 50 degrees and work that out we have our time to be 448 seconds so the shortest possible time to hit the target is 448 seconds and that is that will take place when when we project the missile at an angle of 50 degrees so we can say that the shortest possible time is four four eight seconds when fired at an angle of 50 degrees the maximum height attained to evaluate the maximum height attained we already know our equation for finding um, displacement in the vertical direction and y is equal to u y t plus half 80 square we had that theta is equal to 50 degrees and acceleration due to gravity is um, ay which is minus 9.81 meter per second we have our initial velocity as velocity of projection to be 15,000 km per hour which we converted to meter per second and we know that ui at the initial the onset of the motion is equal to u sine theta so easily we evaluated ui which is um, the initial velocity in the vertical direction that we're using to solve our equation and we had that um, ui is equal to 3191.85 meter per second because we are working with the angle for us to attain the shortest possible time to hit our target so the problem now becomes at what time will this happen i will know that this will happen when the velocity is zero because usually at the maximum height the velocity is zero that's when the object projects upwards to the maximum height such that um the velocity reaches zero then it begins to fall so the velocity upwards reduces as a result of gravitational effect up to the maximum height then it begins to it, it begins to fall down so we can see at the maximum height our velocity vy is zero so if we call for our equation that relates final velocity initial velocity and acceleration due to gravi gravity we have that vy is equal to ui plus at and if we bring in all our unknowns vy ui a we can easily calculate time so we therefore have that zero is equal to the value of the initial velocity ui minus 9.81 t we 9.81 minus 9.81 is the value of acceleration due to gravity so we have that our value of t is as calculated to be 325.37 seconds so this is the time that the object will get to the maximum height but we're not looking for this time we're looking for the maximum height itself so we're going to put this value of time into our equation used to calculate vertical displacement 
And if we do that, we get our maximum height to be 518723.73 meters. And that can be approximated to be 509 kilometers. So that's the maximum height the object would get to. So, so far we've estimated the angle of projection. We've um, determined the shortest possible time to hit the target and what angle of projection would help us achieve that. And finally, we've um, calculated the maximum possible height the missile will get to before it hits the target. Well, you may want to try your hands on this problem that involves a Kinza hypersonic missile that was fired from an aircraft that was at an height of 35 km in Moscow with an initial velocity of 9,000 km per hour at an angle of 20 degrees with the horizontal. And if we're told to neglect the air resistance, we have to look for the fastest possible horizontal distance that the, the, from the point of launch to the point where the missile would strike the ground, then the greatest elevation above the ground reached by the projectile. This problem is similar to the one we just solved, just that for this case, we'll be working backwards to get the dimensions, both horizontal distance and um, um, vertical distance, as against the other one that we had, made a vertical distance and horizontal distance, and to calculate for angle of projections, as well as um, um, time of flight and highest possible distance attained. So for this case, the answers are farthest horizontal distance is 255.6 kilometers, and the greatest elevation from the ground is 72.3 kilometers. So this will be all for now. I want to thank you for watching and for your time. Please do well to subscribe to the channel and see you in subsequent videos.